Roger, one of the hot areas is the foundations of quantum theory. What does it really mean when you dig down beneath it? We know of the conflict between quantum mechanics of the very small and general relativity of the, of the, of the entire universe. Um, but from your perspective, which has been rather unique in, in both uh, mathematical physics and cosmology, uh, what, what, do, what do you feel about the fundamentals of quantum theory? Well, I certainly think that quantum mechanics, uh, well, not only does it work very well at a small level where, I mean, small mass displacements, but uh, it is a sort of, I would rather, as the limit of a more correct theory which applies at all levels when the mass displacements get small. Now, why I think there will be a deviation, there are all sorts of reasons. One is that uh, we don't see the dead and alive cats superposed and things like that. Um, but more specifically, there are conflicts with general relativity. Now, you can phrase this in different ways, but the way which I think is most powerful in a sense, although not quite the easiest to work out in detail, has to do with a conflict between the superposition principle of quantum mechanics, which says, you know, if A happens and if B can happen, then superpositions right. of A and B happen too. And they both concur, co coexist. Um, now, Imagine an experiment on a tabletop where you're doing a quantum mechanical experiment and you want to take into consideration the gravitational field of the Earth. Now, there are two ways you might do this. One is simply the ordinary Newtonian way. You say, well, there's a force. You put that in what's called the Hamiltonian in the quantum, in your Schrodinger equation, and you just treat it as like any other force. That's fine. It works. But that's not Einstein's view. Einstein's view is that the gravitational field of the Earth is really equivalent to an acceleration. So it you know, goes back to Galileo, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Einstein made it into a fundamental principle, which is the real basis. Equivalence of his, principle. Yes, yes, the equivalence principle, the real basis of general relativity. Now, so he says, no, the acceleration of the Earth, you, by allowing your frame of reference to fall freely, there's no gravitational field. Mm -hmm. You do your quantum mechanics all over again, transform back to the stationary frame, and you get almost the same answer. The answer differs by your wave function differing by what's called a phase factor. Now that's a sort of mathematical term, but it means normally you say if it's only a phase factor, you really don't care. It's equivalent. And in fact, it would be equivalent if you just had one gravitational field. But if you look carefully at that phase factor, you see it involves the time cubed. Now, the reason why that's an, an issue is that it tells you that you're dealing with two different vacua. Now, that's a funny idea which needs some explanation, but it's the thing that people worry about in quantum mechanics, quantum field theory primarily, where you have to worry about what the vacuum state is, mm -hmm. and it leads to all sorts of issues which I don't particularly want to go <laughs> into here. But you do have two different vacuums. Now it doesn't matter if you're just having one gravitational field, you just don't care about the different vacuum. But if you have a superposition of two gravitational fields, it's different. Because suppose you had, as part of your experiment, a lump in one location which could be superposed with it being in another location. Now its gravitational field will have to be taken into consideration. But when you t look at the gravitational field of uh, one oh, lump, oh, yeah compare it with the other, yeah, yeah. you've got a different, different. vacuum. Uh, okay. Now, different vacua are illegal. It's illegal to make superpositions with different vacuum. That's one of the rules <laughs> of quantum field theory. So you're not allowed to make these superpositions. Uh, so it's telling you, no, you're stuck. Well, I don't think we're stuck. <laughs> We've got to do something. But so you then look and say, well, when is this different vacuum issue going to make itself felt? Probably not for a while. And you can make an estimate how long it would take before this vacuum, difference in vacuum is going to actually make a difference. And I take this to be a measure of the reduction state. So you've got the lump over here and the lump over here. To have them coexist in that superposition forever would land you in this vacuum problem. Uh -huh. So if it only lasts for a, le a certain length of time, and you can work that time out from Heisenberg's time, energy, uncertainty principle as a good estimate. So you say, well, after a certain length of time, it will become one or the other, and then you're out of trouble. Now, that means fiddling with the rules a bit, 
but you've got to fiddle with the rules anyway. Either you're completely stuck, what do you do? Or you say, no, I'm not completely stuck because I'm only allowing this superposition to last for a length of time, which uh, just before is going to cause me trouble. Now, most people, though, would privilege quantum mechanics over general relativity and say, if we have to make a change, which we do, we're going to have to deal with quant quantized gravity or something. We're going to have to change general relativity yeah. because quantum mechanics is more fundamental. Do you agree with that? I agree that most people would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that I think it's true that most people would say that. I don't agree with the argument. It's true that general relativity only really starts to come into its own for large systems, sure. but it really does. When you take uh, you know, black holes and galactic, we, we, our, our own galaxy has a black hole which is about four million times the mass of the sun, yeah. and it works well. General relativity, people say there's no known contradiction between quantum mechanics and, and observed facts. There's no non known contradiction between general relativity and observed fact. When you take into account what people refer to as dark energy, I don't like the term, Einstein's cosmological constant yeah. lambda, <laughs> lambda, which he introduced for admittedly the wrong reasons <laughs> in 1917. But it's been there in his equations and in all the cosmology books ever up till now. Now these wonderful observations that were made at the end of the last century, which do seem to indicate that that term is there. Okay, put it in. Now we don't have any known conflict between general relativity and observed facts. So it's one or the other. Well, I say it's not really one or the other. It's a, a, an even-handed marriage between one and the other. People usually say, no, quantum mechanics has to be fundamental. Whatever mm. GR does, you've got to fit in with quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. I think that's unfair. And also, maybe it's my bias because I've grown up with <laughs> general relativity, but uh, the principles of general relativity uh, are, are really very powerful and they produce quite unexpected things, most particularly black holes, which uh, don't occur in, in, in Newtonian theory. Not, certainly not the, the kind of things you get out of Einstein's theory. Which so you look for the harmony to be either a marriage between the two, or a, a marriage of equals? or maybe yeah. some fundamental theory sitting below both of them? Well, I would think of that, yes. It's got to be give on both sides, which is really a new fundamental theory, taking principles from both, modif modifying those principles where needed. So, uh, yeah, I expect a change in both theories. But in a sense, maybe more of a change on the quantum side, partly because one of, this is a different topic, but one of the um, things I've been working on recently has to do with cosmology. And there I have a different view from what I used to have. So it's a different view from the view that here the Big Bang is a place where quantum gravity you know, it rules, you see. So one of the big reasons for studying quantum gravity is to understand the Big Bang. The current scheme that I have now is for some reason we can get away with classical physics. It's not quantum gravity. Quantum gravity may come in in the black holes in their singularities, yes, sure. It may come in in very delicate experiments of tiny distances, yes, sure. But when it comes to the Big Bang, it seems that we get away with classical physics. Now that's an outrageous thing to say, <laughs> but, but that's what I believe now, yes.